SafetyNet is a web-based system, designed for recording hazard and incident reports, safe work procedures, and risk assessments. SafetyNet can be accessed a number of different ways. The main way users can access SafetyNet is via the link from the UOW Safe at Work webpage. It also can be accessed via the Stuff Intranet page. Another way of accessing SafetyNet is via a hyperlink contained within an email notification or a corrective actions reminder, which are generated after a report has been completed. When you click on the link to SafetyNet, the login screen will appear. You need to enter your UOW username and password. Logging in off site. If you are not connected to a UOW server, you will need to download software from IT at the following address and then follow the instructions that can be downloaded from the Safe at Work website on the Hazard and Incident Reporting page. Risk management involves having a systematic process for addressing hazards in the workplace. It is the process of identifying hazards, assessing the risk from the hazard, implementing strategies to eliminate or control the hazard, and reviewing controls to monitor and improve controls. The following slides will take you through the risk management process. Identifying hazards. A hazard is anything in the workplace that has the potential to cause harm or damage to persons, property, or the environment. Some examples of hazards are hazardous chemicals, manual handling tasks, and moving parts on machinery. Sometimes our perceptions of a hazard can influence how we rate a risk. For example, working at a computer is often thought of as a lower risk activity than working with a toxic chemical. However, a number of factors could make working at a computer the same risk as working with a toxic chemical, such as working long hours at your computer, working with poor postures, working with a poor workstation setup, and sitting for prolonged periods without breaks. A toxic chemical may pose a low to medium risk if it is used infrequently, in small quantities, and all the correct procedures for its use are followed. This is why when you are assessing the risk of a hazard you need to consider what the level of harm or consequences could be and the likelihood of the harm or consequences occurring. When looking at consequences, you need to consider the following. What type of harm could occur? How serious could the harm be? Could the hazard cause death, serious injuries, illness, or only minor injuries, requiring first aid treatment? How many people are exposed to the hazard? How many could be harmed in and outside your workplace? What factors could influence the severity of harm that occurs? For example, the distance someone might fall, or the concentration of a particular substance. Could a small event escalate to a much larger event, with more serious consequences? The likelihood that someone will be harmed can be estimated by considering the following. How often is the task done? Does this make the harm more or less likely? How often are people near the hazard? How much of the hazard is there? What controls are in place already? How effective are they in controlling the hazard? Has an incident or near miss happened before? Either in your workplace or somewhere else? How often? Other factors that may influence the likelihood include environmental factors, slippery surfaces, or extreme heat or cold, work organizational factors, time pressures, or staffing issues, poor or broken tools or equipment. Are tools and equipment appropriate for the task being performed? The university has a risk matrix that is used to calculate the level of risk. Let's take a look at rating the risk of the activities we discussed before. Let's work out the level of risk for working at your computer. 1. Consider most likely harm to occur. The most likely harm would be medical treatment if you receive a repetitive strain injury. So the consequence is major. 2. Consider the likelihood 
taking into consideration all the factors that may increase the risk like Working long hours at your computer Is your equipment set up properly? Are you taking breaks? The most probable likelihood would be that an injury may occur at some time. So the likelihood is possible. So the risk rating for working at your computer is medium. Let's work out the level of risk for working with a toxic chemical. Let's use methanol as an example. Consider the consequences of working with methanol. When working with chemicals, you need to refer to the safety data sheet. The safety data sheet will provide information about the hazards of working with the chemical, including any possible injuries or illness that could occur from working with the chemical. As you can see, Methanol is toxic via inhalation, skin contact, and ingestion, and can cause permanent damage to organs and the nervous system. Therefore the consequence of coming into contact with methanol could be severe. Now let's consider the likelihood of this consequence occurring. Taking into consideration all the factors that may increase the risk like How much of the chemical is used? What is its concentration? What controls are in place to prevent contact? such as working only in a fume hood, and using personal protective equipment. If we are only using small quantities, and we are working in a fume hood with personal protective equipment and clothing, then the most probable likelihood would be unlikely. Therefore the risk of working with methanol is medium. You must always aim to eliminate a hazard, which is the most effective control. If this is not reasonably practicable, you need to minimize the risk by working through the other alternatives in the hierarchy. Remember, you can use a combination of controlled measures in order to minimize the risk. Level 2 risk controls are to substitute the hazard with something safer. For instance, replace solvent based paints with water based ones. The next level of control is to isolate the hazard from people. This involves physically separating the source of harm from people by distance, or using barriers. For instance, having noisy equipment away from workers. The next level of control is to change the workplace, equipment or work process. For instance, place guards around moving parts of machinery. Level 3 controlled measures provide the least level of protection against risk, as they rely on human behavior and supervision. The level 3 controlled measures are Administrative controls For instance, develop procedures on how to operate machinery safely. And the last level in the hierarchy of controls is To use personal protective clothing or equipment. Level 3 controls should only be used alone when higher levels are not reasonably practicable. Or as an interim measure, until higher levels can be implemented. It is important to review any controls that have been put into place. When conducting a review ask yourself the following. Are the controlled measures working effectively in both their design and operation? Have the controlled measures introduced new problems? Have new work methods, new equipment or chemicals made the job safer? Are safety procedures being followed? We will now go through. The process of completing a safety net risk assessment form. Initial details. This section identifies document ownership and provides search data. The faculty division and unit fields indicate the relevant area owning and developing the document. The work activity field is a brief title describing the work occurring. The risk assessment should also be categorized under the most relevant selection to allow searching of the document. The location building, room, and specific location fields, identify the site the risk assessment applies to, where the risk assessment relates to the purchase of an item or service. Select the Yes radio button, and enter the purchase order number, in the field provided. In the Risk Assessment Type section, tick the relevant section that relates to the risk being assessed. In the Developers section you can add additional persons, who will be able to make changes to the risk assessment form. To add an additional staff member, click Add Staff. To add a student, 
click Add Student. To add other, for example a contractor, click Add Other. Check the main contact box, to identify one person, who will be the main point of contact in the work group. This person is responsible to ensure the form is completed, and submitted on behalf of the persons nominated. In the Approvers section, the form automatically populates the supervisor for staff. Students and contractors will need to add their approver manually. Any person who may be required to review and approve the document should also be added to this list. Approvers are restricted to UOW personnel, and are able to modify the risk assessment. However any modification should be made in consultation with the developers. To add an approver, click the Add Approver button. Adding Reference Documentation To add reference documentation, click Add Document. You must enter details of any documentation reference during the development of the document. Reference documentation should be relevant and appropriate. It is important that you reference any UOW documents, legislation, codes of practices, or Australian standards that relate to the hazards you are assessing. The next section of the form is the risk assessment and control page. In the first section, add all hazards relating to the task. To add a hazard, click the Add Hazard button. The hazard identification window opens. Enter all the hazard information, such as a description of the hazard, any current controls, and the risk assessment. Then click Save. To add more hazards, click the Add Hazard button. If there are safe work procedures available for this activity, select the Yes Radio button and update the table to include any safe work procedures that are applicable to the control of these hazards. You will need to add additional controls, if the hazard is rated as high, in order to reduce the risk further. To add additional risk controls, click the Add Control Action icon. The Corrective Action Details window opens. The Control Type field allows for the recording of corrective actions. Following the hierarchy of controls, each type of control must be considered in turn, commencing with elimination. If a control is not reasonably practical then the next one should be considered, and so on. For example if a hazard cannot be eliminated then the user should assess if it can be substituted and so on. Enter a description of the corrective action taken. For example, use an alternate chemical that is less hazardous. In the person responsible field, click the search icon to locate the name of the person assigned to undertake the corrective action. This search is similar to person search. However only authorized supervisors and academic staff are contained in the list. Relevant files including images, manuals, emails, or other documents can be attached. To include a file, click the Browse button and find the file you wish to add. Once the file has been selected, click the Add Document link to insert the file into the document. Review and Comments page On this page the developer has two options, to save, or send the document. 1. Saving the document, selecting the Save Document option, allows the user to save the document as a draft, and return at a later stage to modify, and complete the form. 2. Send for approval. Selecting the Process for Approval option allows the user to send the document to the approvers, for review and approval. The user is required to complete all fields prior to submitting the document. Once the risk assessment form has been successfully submitted, the nominated supervisor receives an email. The email directs the supervisor via a link to the online report form for review and approval. The supervisor is required to review the document and consider if the risk ratings are appropriate for the hazards and that the corrective actions used are suitable to eliminate or reduce the risk of the hazards. All persons listed as approvers on the form have two options, to approve the document, or to return it to the work group. To approve the document, the approved document option confirms that the user has reviewed the document, and is approving the document. To return the document to the work group, select the return to developers option. This means the approver has identified that the document requires modification before use. 
the approver is required to input a comment regarding the improvements that are required. For more information or help contact the Health and Safety Unit.